What is up, everybody? Alex from WMD here, back at you again. And this time we're going to be talking about a new module, OSD. This is a useful utility module in 4HP. In this video, we're going to go over what OSD is. We're going to go over the different types of logic that it contains. And then we'll make a patch using all three of OSD's blocks so you can get an idea of how you might use it in your own system. Let's dive into it. All right, so here is my OSD. As you can tell, three different blocks of utility. Each block has three inputs and one output. Block one starts with inputs A and B and a crossfader that you can mix between those two. You can choose whether you want A and B to OR, SUM, or take the difference. The result of that logic can be ORed with input number three and then outputted out the output. Block number two is identical to block number one, although it does not have a crossfader. Block three is very simple, three individual OR inputs and one output. So what are OR, SUM, and DIFFERENCE? The best way for me to show you is to use an oscilloscope so you can have a visual representation of what's going on. I'm going to use the MORDAX data here, and I'm just going to go out of block number two. And you can see that this immediately gives us a negative voltage. That's because there's a negative voltage normal to these inputs, so if you're only using one of them, you can still use bipolar signals. So now I'm going to plug in an output of the 410. You can see nothing happens. We have no voltage coming out. But as I raise, let me get rid of this guy here. As I raise the voltage on 410, we get voltage coming out. So now I'm just going to take another output of 410, and I'm going to run that into the B input. We're set to OR here on switch number two. So if I go over here and say, let's, let's find like, I think that's two volts, right? Because that'd be five. Yeah, so if we find two volts, there we go. We're at that level. And as I push this other fader up, we're not seeing anything happen until we exceed two volts. So an OR basically takes the two inputs and it compares the two, and whichever is higher, that goes to the output. So let's say you have one, one volt in input A, two volts in input B, you're going to get two volts on the output. All right, so now we're going to move to SUM. I'm going to bring these both back down to zero. Let's take this first one up to two volts again, and now let's bring the second one up. First, we got to switch to summing. There we go, now let's bring the second one up. You can see that I've added two volts already just by getting to the same position about. So there we go, now we have four volts on that output. So summing takes the two and it literally adds them together. So if we have two volts in input one, two volts in input two, we're gonna get four volts on the output. Now, what's really cool about OSD is we can take the difference. So we have two plus two right now, so what's gonna happen? That takes us to zero because we have two volts in input one and then we have our input A, excuse me, and then uh, two volts in input two. And now we take input A and we subtract B from A. Therefore, we go back to zero volts. So this is a fun way to just kind of switch it up and see what happens when you add a bunch of different things together. As I mentioned, we can do the same thing here in uh, block number one here. So let's just say I want these to be ORed. And now we're just going to like turn this guy up a ton. Well, now we can crossfade between the two. This one's going to be a lot easier to show with some CV data. And uh, we'll get it right into that next. All right, so now that we know what OR, SUM, and DIFFERENCE are, let's build a patch using OSD. So one of the reasons we created OSD was to combine two volt per octave signals so you could take outputs from two separate sequencers and create a, a new sequence. This is going to work a lot better in blocks two and three as those two are very high precision. When you bring this crossfader in here, you add a lot more variables on block one. So if you're going to be using volt per octave with OSD, I definitely recommend using blocks two or three, and that's what we're going to do here. So I'm going to take the output, volt per octave output of my architect. I'm going to run that into the OSD. I'm going to take the output into the PDO, the volt per octave of the PDO. 
bake the output of that. Why don't we go through a filter for now, just for fun. Go out of that into the Javelins VCA, out of the Javelins VCA into a channel. And now we'll take the gate output of Architect and we'll run that into Javelin. Let's take the output, in, uh, the envelope output of Javelin, run that into the uh, carbon FM input here. And now let's feed the Architect some triggers and see what happens here. All right, we got a high range up here, so let's tune this up a little bit. All right, so just for the demonstration, sake of demonstration, I'm gonna keep this on a pretty standard arpeggio here. And why don't we also take the output here, we'll run it into the data so we can see what's going on. There we go. All right. So now let's take another voltage source and why don't we see if we can't loop this guy back with it. Go out of Volterra and we'll go into input B here. So now let's uh, record some information. That's pretty cool. So now you can hear we have combined those two, although with the architect, we're hearing the lower section, and then as soon as the, vol the voltage from Volterra gets higher than what Arpitect's providing, it's taking over. So now let's hear what the summing sounds like. We get lots of higher voltage because now we're actually summing those two sequencers together. So now let's hear what the difference sounds like. Lots of lower notes because now we're taking all of the, we're taking the two and we're uh, subtracting B from A. Let's go back up to OR. All right, that's pretty cool. Let's slow down the sequence. So I'm gonna make this kind of a quacky filter just so we can really hear what's happening. The next one I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the output of Javelin and I'm gonna run that into this channel three here, or the second Javelin. Run that into an OR input on the bottom three, doesn't matter which one. And instead of going directly out of this input, I'm gonna go into the OR channel first. Now we'll go back out, go into the filter, and we've got this javelin on a looping, uh, on a looping uh, envelope. So this is basically an LFO. So now we can hear that we've got this lower section here, covered by the kind of more percussive envelope. And then once this one gets higher than this one is providing, we're getting a sweep. So it's kind of a fun way of combining those two things. Let's take these up and put them on channel one instead, or block number one. So now we're only hearing this envelope. Let's put it over to OR again. If we go to this side, now we're only going to hear uh, the effect of this envelope. So now if we put it in the middle, it's, we're essentially going to get the exact same as we had down here with the ORs. So now let's go to the summing in the middle. So summing can be really cool because it can create like a more of like an accented kind of an effect, right? So you can send something into here that adds some voltage to your signal and will give you an accented kind of sound. And now with difference, we're gonna need to turn the filter up, I'm pretty sure, let's hear it. Yeah, let's turn the filter back up. too much of a difference in this patch. We can hear what's going on. So now I'm gonna take these and I'm just gonna go back to our original set, uh, OR here. And 
now we're going to add some drums. And I'm just going to take the drums, I'm just going to use Fracture. That's all I'm going to do with this one. And we will take input or output number two here. We're going to run that into input A of channel one or block one as we should call it. And then I'm going to take just another output here, number three. I'm going to run that into input B here. Now let's take the output of block one. We'll run that into the trigger input on our fracture. And now we should be able to hear fracture once we turn it up. Oh, we should probably program some gates, eh? So let's do something like this. Cool, there we go. Now this second channel, I'm just gonna do 16th notes. So now I can use this crossfader to choose when I'm going to bring those 16th notes in. So I think that's just kind of a fun way to play with gates. Logic and gates are uh, very well suited for each other, but I think this is kind of a fun way to have two rhythms and then just kind of switch between them. So the next thing we'll do with this one is we'll just add a gate source from a random place into this OR and see what happens. So I'm going to take the slide output, which I believe is up here, and I'm just going to plug that into this other input here. And now let's turn up the slide rhythm. Now we're just going to get some extra gates here from the slide rhythm out. Those are being ORed with the uh, top channel. So yeah, we can still come over here and get our 16th notes, but the reason why it's not staying steady is because this gate will stay high for a little while. So that's what's going on, it's just staying high. All right, so let's take that guy back out. And let's try one more thing with this filter. So we've got the filter coming out of output number three. I'm just gonna take this one and I'm just gonna run the PDO back into itself. So you can hear that when the filter goes lower, we're getting a buzzy kind of FME sound on the filter itself. So that's it. I hope that gives you some ideas on how you might be able to use OSD in your patch. It's available now. Check us out, wmdevices.com. As always, please like and subscribe, and we will see you all next time. Peace.